Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indisful Mind podcast for Tuesday, February 16th, 2016. And as of this morning, Sierra is still missing. So, so, so. Yeah, to give you an idea of what this winter has been like here, uh, today's supposed to be kind of nice. It's 26 degrees right now. I think we're supposed to get up to like 35. But yesterday at work, we had kind of a snow slash freezing rain kind of thing going on. And when I got outside for lunch, I found my car windows is totally covered in ice. And so I had to get the scraper out to scrape it off. So I got this, you know, one of these big snow brush slash scrapers all in one deals. And it was still in the trunk. <laughs> I mean, here we are at mid-February and my snow brush and scraper was still in the trunk. There have been years where that puppy has been out and been used in November. And I haven't really had a need to use it <laughs> until yesterday. Wow, that's nuts. So what I thought I'd talk about today, it's also a quasi-political topic. Uh, And then tomorrow, I guarantee you, will not be anything political at all. But this topic is timely, and so I wanted to discuss it. You know, Sunday, we got the announcement that um, Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia had passed. And he was one of the conservative justices on the court. And... You know, some of the reactions, there are a couple of the reactions that I saw out there on the interwebs that were just, that were just ridiculous. You know, I want to say insane, but that's kind of, um, an insult to people who have mental health issues. I mean, it was just unconscionable is really probably the appropriate word. There was one person who said he felt like dancing. Uh, And there were some other ones like that where basically, you know, they were running around singing Ding Dong the Witch is Dead because Justice Scalia was a conservative and they are liberals and now they can see the balance of power shifting in the Supreme Court. But just the vitriol that came out of it, you know, like the guy saying he was, he was, you know, he was, felt like dancing. Uh, And then there was another person who was, was talking about how happy he was to hear that Scalia was dead. And, you know, it really crossed the line for me. It really did. I'm just like, seriously. You know, I'm okay if somebody expresses something along the lines of, you know, now that there's a vacancy on the Supreme Court, I'm looking forward as a liberal to the court reflecting more of my views and, and, and there being more liberal justices on the court. You know, that's fine. That's an opinion. You know, I'm perfectly okay with that. You know, but to basically be dancing on this man's grave, to be chortling in glee, which well, none of them said that. That was, you know, that, that was basically what was happening. That was basically what was happening. That was the the image that they were putting forth was that they were chortling in glee over this man's death because of what it would mean for their cause to get a more liberal justice on the Supreme Court. And to me, that that really crossed a line, as I said earlier. And I realized this morning, I was thinking about this as I was taking my morning shower. I do my best thinking in the shower. 
I realized what the line was. You know, we talk about, uh, or, or, you know, legally we talk about when it, when somebody is being, you know, discriminatory or whatever, one of the phrases that is used, if they, if people are being verbally abused, is that hate speech has been used. And you know what? As far as I'm concerned, these posts were hate speech. They were they were that bad. I think, in my opinion, this whole podcast is my opinion. But just to make it absolutely fracking clear, this is my opinion. And so I I decided also in the shower, you know that. If that's what it is, if that's what it feels like to me, then I don't need to see that kind of crap on my Facebook feed, on my Twitter feed. So I am adopting a zero tolerance policy towards such hate speech. And that means that if we're Facebook friends, if we are Twitter followers, we no longer will be. I know one of the people that posted, I, I know for sure one of the people that posted these comments there, I think they were on Facebook on Sunday. And I'm pretty sure I know who the other one is, because I think there were two main people whose stuff I saw, and then I kind of tuned out after that, because I didn't really want to see any more. And, and, and I, the one person I'm going to unfollow next time I get to sit down with my Facebook app, I have not had a chance to. Um, but he's unfollowed. Done. I, I I just don't want to see that kind of bullshit. Pardon the French. And, and the sad thing is, he's a patio books author. I, I it's male. Obviously, I just said he. You know, I've I've reviewed his books on this podcast, but that crossed the line. The other person, I don't know. I gotta look and see if I'm remembering the right person. And and if I can if I can dope out who it was, then then they're gone too. Um, and that's something I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue because you know, life's just too short to put up with stuff like that. Now that doesn't mean that everybody who says something I disagree with are gone. That's not what I'm saying. You know, I've got plenty of people in my Facebook feeds that are. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm more of a conservative guy, as you probably figured it out. You know, I, I have a number of people on my Facebook feeds that are liberals, you know. And I'm okay with, you know, you know, calling Trump an idiot or, you know, calling Trump an ass or, you know, conservative calling Hillary a bitch or, you know, whatever. You know, just kind of those typical mudslinging, campaigning things that are going around. I don't want shouldn't say I'm okay with it. To me, that's you know, that just kind of goes with it. You know, I might roll my eyes at it and move on. To me, this was this was like a level of magnitude worse because it's it's totally subsuming your human compassion for a political viewpoint, which is really what hate gets to. I mean, you've totally you've totally and any any you know human compassion, decency, whatever you've totally submerged that in some ideology that leads you to hate. You know, to me that's kind of a definition. And if you've gone that far, I don't want to interact with you. Because I dislike a lot of things. I dislike a lot of people. I disagree with a lot of people. I don't feel like I hate much of anybody. I mean, to me, hate is, hate is, you know, I want to see you dead. And then when you're dead, I want to dance on your grave. And anybody who mourns your passing, well, they're just idiots because there is nothing worthwhile about you at all. So yeah, that'll be my policy going forward. Zero tolerance. Just so you know. The other thing that's stupid is, is the Republicans, you know, the Republicans' reaction. You know, 
they're trying to block uh, President Obama from you know, uh, appointing another nominee because it's an election year and with the thought process being, well, we may win the election and then we want to nominate somebody. Yeah, and that's just, that's just ridiculous. Apparently there's been, there's been some, some, I just heard this on the radio this morning, some squawking that, uh, uh, oh, you know, it should be a vote of the people to, to nominate the, the next Supreme Court justice. And like, well, you know, the, the Constitution is pretty clear about that. Who does it? It's the president confirmed by the Senate. Yeah, it's not a ton of ambiguity there. And the Republicans are just being, I mean, come on, it's February. And he, he holds office until like January 20th of next year or something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, that, that he's going to sit on his hands and that you're going to leave the court of justice short for most of a year. You know, if it was December of 2016 and he had a month in office, yeah, maybe. It probably wouldn't get done before he was out anyway with the whole approval process. You know, but the Republicans aren't alone in this. Uh, uh, a Facebook friend of mine posted a news article uh, about in 1960, the Democrats had put forth a resolution you know, ask, uh, basically seeking to block Eisenhower from uh, appointing any Supreme Court justices uh, during the last you know, year of his presidency as well. So, I mean, they both do it. It's stupid. It's stupid. Whoever does it. But, yeah. You know, so Republicans, just, you know, good luck. It isn't going to happen. You know, I think the Democrats control the Senate, if I remember correctly. So, Barack Obama's already said he's going to put forth somebody. Interestingly enough, I did see a an article that was uh, supposedly, you know, from from a conversation that had been had with Justice Scalia, where where he wanted there was a liberal justice that he felt should be justice of the Supreme Court. Um, I forget her name. It was a woman, obviously, but he just felt that the important thing, more so than thinking conservative or liberal, Democrat or Republican, was intelligence. I mean, what a novel viewpoint that was. And in Scalia's mind, you know, this woman, even though she had, was from, you know, the liberal camp, she had that mindset, he felt she was the smartest um, person, the best qualified to join the Supreme Court. So we'll see if that's the person that uh, President Obama nominates. You know, the, the, the ongoing drama of, uh, of Washington continues. <laughs> Unending. Who needs a soap opera? Man, just watch the news. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to let that be that for today. Tomorrow, I- I'll even give you a sneak peek so you know... It's not going to be anything remotely political. Tomorrow, the topic is space opera. So anyway, I'll be back to talk about that. I'm looking forward to it. But until then, be seeing you.